All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises. Call Allah, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. This is Rayabi Bangad. This is the ZOI camp. Back with another lesson um, dealing with religion. <clears throat> That's what this lesson is going to be about. What true religion is according to the Bible. Okay. Um, now, you know, I want to first and foremost call Allah Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's deal with this. All right. This is a quick hit lesson. You know, Lord willing, it's not that long. Now, let's go into the definition of religion because a lot of a lot of people from from the Israelite community, a lot of one West Israelite groups, a lot of guys that are miseducated and don't understand scripture or meaning of words or they make up meaning of words. They say a lot of things and they don't understand like the word religion. It's not what they like. A lot of people utilize the word religion as they say, oh, and they say they, they say things that are regurgitation without looking things up for themselves. All right. A lot of people say religion is speaking on something that that is uh, like a slate, something that that is uh, a noted or slacky uh, attributed to slavery or bondage. Right. But when you actually go look at the definition for yourself and understand what religion truly means, you will begin to understand that it's not a bad thing as long as you're dealing with the true religion, no, dealing with our customs, our culture and our heritage, dealing, dealing with the fact that we worship Yahweh, we worship Yahweh Shai and, the, and, and we are in tune with the Holy Ghost, the Racha Kodash, and we're in tune with the lessons. All right. Or. I should say the scriptures and the lessons thereof that are taught by the scriptures. All right. And of course, keeping our law, statutes and commandments, this is our religion. All right. So let's deal with religion. Now I'm just going to look up the dictionary, um, the regular dictionary, the modern dictionary uh, definition. Now it says the belief in religion. Now the belief in and in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods, right? So you have different religion, uh, religious uh, belief systems, all right? Uh, and I can read this part where it says religion is a social, social cultural system of designated behaviors and practices, morals, worldviews, texts, sanctified places, prof prophecies, ethics, or organizations that relates humanity to supernatural, transcendental, transcendental and spiritual elements, right? So, and we see all the pagan, all this paganistic stuff that we see, all the different uh, nations in the world, and the different subgroups of nations in the world. Um, and you know, they worship these particular uh, religions, or they use these religions in their particular cultures, right? And we know in the kingdom of heaven, you know, the one true religion is going to be this word, the law, such as the commandments, all right, in the worship of Yahweh through the son, Yahweh Shai, in, in, in tune with the Rechak Wadash, okay? Now, let's go ahead and look up the word religion in the, in the etymology. And then after that, we're going to go into the scriptures, all right, to further give you a clear understanding, all right? Religion. So it goes back to the re Latin religio to bind. Latin religio. Obligation. Bond. Reverence. All right. So it says Middle English originally in the sense life under monastic views from Old French or from Latin religion. Or religio, salakia, obligation, bond, reverence, perhaps based in Latin re, re, religio to bind. So when you deal with binding, it's not holding you down. All right. Now, if somebody's forcing you to follow their understanding in their religion, then that's a different thing. That's something that's entirely different. 
But binding is something you bind binding yourself to. All right. Um, and I always think about that scripture in uh, the Songs of Solomon. Or oh, I hold fast to him and never let him go. Speaking of the, holding fast to this love of the most high. Right. That's what is dealing with that. All right. Binding yourself bond, binding yourself to the to your religion. Is that not what we're doing? Yes, we are. Reverence. All right. Giving exaltation to something. All right. Exalting something. All right. To, of high regard. And it's an obligation. So you make it mandatory for yourself to attribute yourself. All right. And immerse yourself into the very religion or belief system. In other words, that you participate in. And we are participate in being Israelites under the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh. All right, but in 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 these times, because of Yahweh Shai's grace, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All right, and the Lord allows His Holy Spirit to dwell within you. All right, to, to the Rechak to dwell in you to receive this understanding. All right, so let's continue. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the scriptures. All right. All right. So let's see. Let's see which scriptures, because uh, I can. I can hit up a lot of different. I could hit up one, any of these in, in a particular uh, manner, but I want to see. Just trying to see which one I could hit up first, because all, all five of these are good. All right. So let's go ahead and start at Acts 26 and five. Right. And this is giving you the scenario of King Agrippa, Paul, pleading for himself amongst King Agrippa, the Edomite. All right. Um, and, you know, dealing with his court case, so to speak. So let's deal with this. Acts 26. Now start at verse 24. My manner of life from my from my uh, youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem know all the Jews which knew me from the beginning if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion watch this right which knew me from the beginning if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee all right so Paul basically basically stated that him being a Pharisee, him and him dealing with the sect of the Pharisees was a religion or uh, was part of their religion, I should say. Why? Because the main religion is what? Dealing with the laws, teachers and commandments. Now, let's go ahead and look at the Strong's definition of religion. All right. Let's go ahead and go here. So it says Strong's G two three five six, Thuriskia, Thuriskia. All right. So it says religious worship, especially external, that which consists of ceremonies, religious discipline, religion, from a derivative of G two two three five seven. All right. There is three skills. All right. And it says fearing or worshiping God or to tremble, trembling, fearful, probably from the base of two, three, six, zero ceremonious in worship. That is pious, religious. All right. And let's go ahead and go to the uh, root word of that. Slakia. All right. And, you know, that doesn't attribute to what we're dealing with. So, yeah, there is Kia. All right. Dealing with religious rights, basically, man. All right. Religious discipline. Worship, man. Ceremonial observance. The law, statutes and commandments. In other words. All right. That's the true religion. So let's go ahead and. Uh, let's go ahead and go back. Let me hit the hit. Let's go ahead and go to Galatians 1 and 13. All right. Now I'm going to go to Galatians 1 and 12. 
Let's give you the uh, context. For neither I received it of men, neither was I taught it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Verse 13. For ye have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond, I, beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous in uh, zealous of the traditions of my father. All right. So the Jews religion is what the, the law system and commandments dealing with everything that deals with our ceremonies, our moral ceremonial dietary. Uh, let's see what was the other one? Moral, dietary, civil, and ceremonial laws. Okay. So, so once again, reiterating the fact that that's that's the religion that the Jews were uh, were engaging in the laws, and the commandments, giving you an understanding of what that religion is not a bad thing, in in a sense of what your religion truly is supposed to be. As an Israelite, all right. Uh, let's go back here. Okay, let's go ahead and go to uh, James one and twenty six. Actually, let's see. Yeah, James one and twenty six. Let's go ahead and go here. If any man among you seem to be religious, let's go ahead and go to verse twenty five. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's go ahead and go to 23. James 1 and 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and, be and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he, he was. All right. Why? Because the word of the Lord is truth. Word of the Lord, the law, and commandments of the Lord, the scriptures. All right. That's our guidance. That's our way. Okay. If we astray away from the word of the Lord, like the scripture says, we, there's no light in us and we, we go into other darkness. Roughly paraphrase. So verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfection of Slakia, uh, James 1 and 25, but whoso looketh into the perf perfect law of liberty, continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. And what are your deeds? The deeds are fulfilling the, the contents of the law, all right? The tenets of the law of the scriptures. And the law of liberty is you liberally keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments in your mind, all right? And in your physical, uh, act, uh, physical acts. So verse 26, so this gives you a clear context. So let's hit, hit the home run right here. James 1 and 26, if a man, it's like if any man among you seem to be a religious, seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. So I'm going to read that again. If any man among you seem to be religious, right? Um, indulging in the ceremony, uh, indulging in the law, of the commandments, in the ceremonies, and basically being engulfed in this truth, right? And, bridle, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, right? And it says, bridle not his own tongue. In, in, in other words, um, not, you know, not keep his mouth shut, all right? You know, doing what he wants to do, in other words, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain, right? So this man's religion is vain. In other words, him keeping the law, such and commandments is vain because he's doing whatever he wants to do liberally. And not keeping the law of liberty, which is liberally keeping the scriptures to the best of your ability. All right. Under your own ability, I might add. Verse 27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Why? Because when you deal with the when you deal with the, our true religion, guess what? The the law, like Yahweh said, love the Lord, the first law of the scriptures is to love thy father like you love thyself. You love thy father 
uh, you love the most high with all thy heart, thy mind, thy soul. And the second law is what? Key is to love your brother and sister <laughs> to the best of your ability. Okay? And a lot of brothers have lost their first love. All right? So James 1 and, 27, uh, 1 and 27, so they think that that's the only thing of doing the work of the law is keeping the laws and going around and teaching the word. That's and that's what they think that's that oh, that the uh, that the true religion is the pure religion that the whole tenets of our law is all right and the law tell in it then Yahweh done told you what it is you know what I'm saying so let me read this one more time James one and twenty seven pure religion all right let's let's deal with the um, let's go ahead and go into the Strong's definition so let's deal with pure. Ketreos, all right? Strong G2, 5, 13, Ketreos. Clean, pure, physically, pure by fire, in a similar to, okay? Clean, pure, right? Religion, you know, religious worship, the riskia, especially external that uh, which consists of ceremonies, religious discipline, religion, right? A pure religion, clean, cut religion, and undefiled before the most high God and the father and the father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Right. So in to keep yourself unspotted from the world. And what does that entail? The other religions of these other nations, the, uh, these other doctrines of these other nations. These other ideologies of these other nations. OK. That's what pure religion is, according to the scriptures. That's what the true religion is, according to the scriptures. All right. Helping your brother and sister out in their time of affliction, the fatherless and the afflicted widows. All right. So these brothers and sisters that need help. And that may not even just be on a, a physical level. That could be speaking on a spiritual level because we're supposed to be what apostles and prophets. Right. The apostles and the prophets, that, that's the part of the, the apostleship to be a damn servant to your brother and sister, to be a messenger, messenger of uh, peace and salutation and salvation, man. OK, and the last part, it says and to keep himself unspotted from the world and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Let's deal with the word world. OK. And keep yourself from the world, cosmos. Yeah, keep yourself from the uh, of, keep yourself unspotted from the worldliness of our uh, of our people, our nation, man. Okay, and this just gives you a perfect um, example of how to be, and that's our true religion. So, with that said, I want to say, call her law, Yahweh Ba Shimiel Shai. All right, this is Rabbi Ben God, the Zealous, Zealous Israel Camp. And uh, I will be back with another one. With that said, I want to say much love to you, brothers and sisters. And with that said, Shalom.